Welcome to Faith Lutheran Church. Epiphany marks the celebration of the wise men, or magi, from the east, who came to Bethlehem to pay respect to Jesus, whom they regarded born King of the Jews. The Feast of Epiphany concludes the Christmas season with a celebration of God's glory revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. That glory is proclaimed for all nations and all people. Like the light of the star that guided the Magi to Jesus, the light of Christ reveals who we are, children of God, named and washed in the waters of baptism. Like the Magi, we are sent out to be beacons of light, the light of Christ, sharing the good news of God's love to all people. Let us confess our sins. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who was in the beginning, who makes a dwelling among us, who covers us with justice and mercy. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. God of goodness and loving kindness, we confess that we have sinned against you and our neighbors. We have turned away from your invitation to new life. We have turned away from the lowly and downtrodden. In your abundant mercy, forgive us our sins, those we know, and those known only to you. For the sake of the one who came to live among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Hear the good news of peace and salvation. God forgives us all our sins, not through our own work, but through Jesus Christ. Let us rejoice in this amazing gift of grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you revealed the incarnation of your Son by the brilliant shining of a star. Shine the light of your justice always in our hearts and over all lands. Accept our lives as the treasure we offer in your praise and for your service. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Isaiah promises that God's salvation, light, and glory will shine out to all nations, and people shall come bearing gifts to the place of that light, the restored Jerusalem. Isaiah 60, verses 1 through 6. Jerusalem, stand up, shine. Your new day is dawning. The glory of the Lord shines brightly on you. The earth and its people are covered with darkness, but the glory of the Lord is shining upon you. Nations and kings will come to the light of your dawning day. The Lord said, Open your eyes, look around. Crowds are coming. Your sons are on their way from distant lands. Your daughters are being carried like little children. When you see this, your faces will glow, your hearts will pound and swell with pride. Treasures from across the sea and the wealth of nations will be brought to you. Your country will be covered with caravans of young camels from Midian and Ephah. The people of Sheba will bring gold and spices in praise of me, the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the second chapter. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem in Judea, Herod was king. During this time, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem and said, Where is the child born to be king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard about this, he was worried, and so was everyone else in Jerusalem. Herod brought together the chief priests and the teachers of the law and asked them, Where will the Messiah be born? They told him, He will be born in Bethlehem, just as the prophet wrote. Bethlehem in the land of Judea, you are very important among the towns of Judea. From your town will come a leader who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Herod secretly called in the wise men and asked them when they had first seen the star. He told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, let me know. I want to go and worship him too. The wise men listened to what the king said and then left. And the star they had seen in the east went on ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. They were thrilled and excited to see the star. When the wise men went into the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother, they knelt down and worshipped him. They took out their gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and gave them to the baby Jesus. Later, they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, and they went back home by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. In just three days, January 6th, we will celebrate the day of Epiphany. Our text today from Matthew comes from that celebration. In Orthodox Christianity, January 6th is the big celebration. Sometimes nativity celebrations are recognized as Western Christianity, December 25th, and Eastern Christianity, January 6th. It's important to note that the Christmas story we have all come to know and love comes from Luke and only from Luke. The Magi, or wise men, or the three kings, belongs to Matthew. There is no nativity story in Mark, and the Gospel of John sees Jesus as the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. So it's a good thing we have four Gospels. The Gospel of Matthew has given us these three wise men, or magi. And yet, of the 12 verses that I read, only one verse focuses on those wise men or those magi and their gifts. Most of the narrative belongs to intrigue. 
And most of the narrative is pretty dark because of one man, and that man is Herod. Consider these verses that I just read. When Jesus was born in the village of Bethlehem, Herod was king. And later on, the Magi asked, where is this child to be born king of the Jews? Herod secretly called the wise men. And then Herod says to them, let me know where he is so I can go and worship him too. Although we kind of suspect that Herod has no intention of worshiping Jesus. At the end of the story, we hear that the wise men were warned in a dream not to go back to Herod. And so they go home by a different way. You know, as I thought about the nativity stories that I've seen and heard and read, the pageants that I've witnessed or been a part of, or the nativity scenes that I've seen put people put out or have been in churches or in my own home, I don't think I've ever seen Herod in one of those nativity scenes. Have you? Have you ever seen Herod in a nativity scene, either as a main character or even a minor character? Herod, you see, is all about power. He's the king. Leaders and important dignitaries come to see him. Herod was the one appointed by Caesar to keep the peace. The peace as Rome knew it. Herod was not a nice man. He was ruthless. Not in the Grinch sort of way, but in the get rid of anyone who stands in your way. It was Herod, after all, who was responsible for the killing of the innocents. If you were to visit Israel-Palestine today, you would see all kinds of structures built by the Herod family. Palaces, stadiums, cisterns, stables. It's ironic, isn't it, that we would find no structures like that built by Jesus. No, Matthew's story is darker than we are accustomed to. Perhaps that, that's why we skip over Herod and focus right on the wise men. The wise men, the magi, recognize Herod's deceit. They also recognize the importance of Jesus. How is it that they were led to Bethlehem to worship this baby who was born king of the Jews? The magi, after all, come from afar. They don't come from next door or even the country next door. Most scholars believe that they came from a faraway place, maybe Iran, that they were Zoroastrianisms, that they practiced that religion of Zoroastrianism. They were not Jews. They were astrologers. They were outsiders. And yet they are led by Bethlehem, to Bethlehem, by the grace of God. What does this tell us? tells me that Jesus did not just come for some people, but for everyone, for all people. And then at the end of the story, the Magi go home by a separate way, by a new way, a different way. It's something for us to reflect on as we approach this new year. I don't know about you, but I'm glad 2020 is behind us. We yearn for a return to a normal time. But like the Magi, returning to normal or returning home will indeed be different, especially after what we've experienced. The things that were supposed to bring us security somehow seem less reliable now. Like the Magi, we're looking for a different way. Years ago when I was in my first parish, it was my first Christmas, actually, as a pastor in a parish. We had celebrated with my parents coming from their home to be with us on Christmas and Christmas Day, Christmas Eve. And our two children were home. They were both in their 20s then, out of college and looking at, at a future. And it was the day after Christmas. It was uh, my parents had gone back to their home in central Wisconsin and the four of us, my husband and I, and our two children, were standing in the living room. I remember it vividly. 
And all of a sudden, my daughter, who was then in her early 20s, burst into tears. And I was perplexed, and I said, Linda, what's the matter? And as she tried to compose herself and, and speak, she said, it's never going to be the same again, is it? And what she meant by that was she was used to Christmases at grandparents with everybody together and all the families and all that kind of thing. And it was a different way of celebrating Christmas for her. And she realized that it was not going to be the same again. We search for good news in this epiphany story. And we look to the Magi who went home by another way a new way, a different way. You know, both on their way to Bethlehem and on their way home, they were led by the light. And I want to suggest to you that the light of Christ leads us too. Whether it's this congregation, Faith Lutheran Church, whether it's individuals, whether it's families, or whether it's you out there who is watching this broadcast, The light of Christ leads us. That light reveals power. Not in the Herod kind of way, power. Not in the historic buildings or armies or the capacity to generate fear or distrust. Not that kind of power, but real power. Jesus' power lies in forgiveness and reconciliation and unconditional love. We call it grace. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. May Christ light our way and make us bold to live in God's grace. Amen.
Thank you for your generosity during this past year. Your gifts of money are appreciated as we continue to make Jesus known here in the Marshfield area. We reach out with gifts to the Northwest Synod of Wisconsin and to the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. We're grateful for partnerships such as Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Disaster Response as they work with the most vulnerable populations in this country and around the world. Thank you for your gifts of time, talent, and treasures. Let us pray. O oh God, accept our offering of ourselves, of our time and talents. Unsettle our lives and redefine them in you. Renew in us a spirit of justice, compassion, and love. Open our eyes, ears, and hearts to hear and see you already at work in the world. Strengthen our commitment to your vision, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Glorious God, fill your church with joy. Let your faithful people live as beacons of your redemption. Give courage to your church that it may speak with confidence, even when words of mercy are met with scorn. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creation displays your faithfulness. Place wonder into the hearts of those who explore the heavens. Curb waste and pollution that all might breathe clean air. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Bring all nations and rulers to the splendor of your dawn. Raise up advocates who care for the most vulnerable people. Inspire leaders to be generous with abundance. We especially pray for children and families experiencing food insecurity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come quickly with your healing power to all who seek love, support, and restoration. Dispel fears and shadows. Restore broken relationships. Bring relief to those who are sick or struggling, especially those whom we name in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send traveling mercies upon all who journey home by other roads. Protect families fleeing conflict in their homelands or abuse in their homes. Guard those who have no place to lay their heads. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. According to the boundless riches of Christ, you draw all your saints to your heavenly places. Make all things new again in the splendor of your glory. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now join together as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. 
and now receive this blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, who proclaimed joy through the angels, who sent the shepherd with good news and led the Magi by a star, bless you this day through the word made flesh. Amen. Go in peace. Share Jesus with the world. Thanks be to God.